Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hmm. It's all very weird. I must have accidentally pressed a button. Evening, Miles. Hello, Andre. Seems like Miles does nothing but sit by his computer waiting for these messages to show up. Hey, Jürgen. Hey, Ed. Ten minute. How's things over in the UK? They're still sweltering. At least it probably, you know, cut your population down by about half. Morning, civil up. Horst, hello. Okay, so we have a seventeen oh six, slightly puffy battery. That's pretty normal. They're getting to that age where that starts to happen. Uh, we're not picking up the SSD, the internal. A couple of possible causes for this. Um, I'm fairly sure the piccolo can often be the culprit. Just got to. Oh, that's weird. You got to look around that area, see if there's anything messing with the voltages to it. That's weird. It's about the first time I've ever had that happen where the battery flex almost gets torn off by taking off the protector not much of a protector hey Derek Chan an easy one you think well I guess we will see remember these are integrated SSDs they are not separate ones like the 1708 or the 1502 or anything like that now it's either if we're lucky it's going to be something of the rails generation if we're unlucky it's going to be a dead ssd as in a dead nand or a dead uh, section of the cpu that handles the nand the SSD. Uh, we'll just uh, get it apart and see what happens. Worst case scenario, we do have a lifeboat connector here, so we may be able to recover the data using the lifeboat. Alright, cooler over there. Is it 10 minutes? Okay, well, that's good. Hey there, Jan Zimmy. Yeah, there's no T2. That does make it easier. Assuming things haven't been completely wrecked. So the first thing I'll probably do is check some rails, make sure they're not shorted. And, well, I'll actually visually check the board first. Now the... There is an indication that there's no physical or liquid damage present, but we'll make our own assessment of that. Sometimes having a different set of eyes can be all the difference. It only takes one spot to ruin everything. Hey, Keith McDermott. Derek Chun is going for the piccolo. Yeah. I get the occasional piccolo job. They don't happen too often around here. But it is nice when you do encounter one. I think the hardest thing about the piccolo job is a lot of the time, uh, but at least for me anyway, I don't tend to keep the piccolo regulators or PMIX controllers on hand too often, or I forget to restock after I've used mine up. And so then you end up scrounging around the workshop trying to find a working piccolo chip. 
Any updates on the T2 from last night? Well, I had a chat with Tim Herman and we bounced a few ideas around and we're sort of thinking it might be the RAM layer on the T2. It's not exactly the sort of thing you want to try and remove. But we might have to try it at some point. But you have to kind of convince the customer that it might be worth the risk. the hardest thing about doing that with the T2 of course is you know reassembling the T2 afterwards with the new RAM module on it it's a bit like dealing with an iPhone 6 Now, Pedro, all of my 1534s are the one that do not have the piccolo. I think it's the 244 that has the piccolo. Or the 168, is it? But I'm pretty sure the 00045 doesn't have it. Pretty sure. I could be wrong. I'll be happy to be wrong. But I seem to think last I checked it did not have right now the most delicate part of this board extraction is getting the touch id button out you don't need a lot of heat but you do need enough heat so that when you lift it up you don't tear it oh, i've still got one screw there Uh, Pedro, it's only, I'm pretty sure it's the 244 that has the piccolo, and I do not have any 244s. Everybody's been generous to me with their 1534s, and it ends up all just being 0045s. Yeah, it's Pedro wants to know your address so that he can send a bag of flaming crap to your doorstep. Hey there, Jim Allen, good morning. Uh, there is enough dust here that uh, okay we've got underfilled cd 3215s no harm in that i will say they don't really perturb me the underfilled 3215s i mean they're a little bit of a nuisance okay we've definitely got corrosion going on here so even if that's not playing a factor in the ssd it uh can come about now the piccolo area is a little bit uh, dusty and it doesn't take much to piss off the piccolo. Yeah, see there's a spot of corrosion on that cap there. Just there. Probably not enough. I gotta admit, it is pretty clean. It's interesting that that's been lifted. Maybe it just came up on its own. Sometimes that happens. Nah, uh, Pedro, I really don't have a problem with the underfill. At least not on these. Things like iPhone 7 Plus or... That's a r really crapped out cap there. That's borderline dead. Uh, so what is this? Is this a 239 or a 923 or a 281? I don't think it's a 281. I think it's a 239. Reveal your board code. John, you're doing a Apple iPhone release security? Or the new M2? You're going to be in Apple store, aren't you?
Yeah, I'll, I'll check the shorts on the Piccolo outputs just now. First, I want to verify what board I have. Because right now, it's somewhat defying me. Oh, it's a 923, yeah. Okay. Hey, Andrew Hughes. Oh, Sexpo. Oh, well, that's vastly more interesting than Apple. Uh, let's see, 1431. As long as they don't offer to pay you with exposure or anything like that. 820, 93. Uh, yeah, there is some jazzy stuff going on in the background. Hey there, PR. Okay, let's start looking for shorts around Piccolo. Hey there, Jason. Did you get... Oh, yeah, you did get packages the other day. So let's see, we're actually over here. Piccolo's just up here. So as you can see, I've got a good number of diode modes here to work from. So I'll start probing around and seeing what is close and what's definitely not close. Okay, here we go. Two seven, two nine, that's good. Three four, three five, that's good. Two two eight. Yeah, that's a little on the low side. That's um point nine volt. Now according to diode mode that should be two two eight, but uh yeah, well point eight yeah, it's okay, it's not as bad as I thought. I was thinking it was something else. Yeah, that's okay. 228. Yeah, it could be maybe this is just a different configuration. These should be all about the same. Alright, see that's 0.28 and that is for 1v8. 28, 29, yeah. 0.3. Okay, we've got a short right here. That is a classic place for a short and I'm almost certain it's going to be that cap there. Okay, five bucks. Okay, I'm not giving out money, but I'm pretty sure that's the short. I don't know what it is about that particular rail, but I do find that very frequently, that's one V2 SSD hot. I find very frequently that has a short on it. And I'm hoping it's that cap, to be honest, because if it's not, then it's probably going to be the NAND. Well, you know, maybe we're lucky. It could be the Piccolo, but unlikely. Or it could be U8600, which is what we really don't want it to be. Yeah, Jason, it does. It had a little spot of corrosion on it, so anyway, we'll, we'll see what how it goes. We'll knock it off. Uh, some hot air would have done the trick. First, I've got to get my tweezers fixed up. I really need to send Harold some money for these pliers because I went just to see what they will cost him. And here at Element 14 or Farnell or whatever you want to call it, these things cost over 150 bucks. These parallel pliers. I mean, they're awesome things. I know when I got them, these are Nipex. When I saw them in the package that Harold sent, I was like, crikey. Yeah, that's a serious bit of investment there. I mean, I would have to think long and hard about buying these, but they are excellent pliers. The sort of thing that you have for, well, 
your entire lifetime. You probably plasti dip the handles a few times over, but the mechanism is just fantastic. Nothing like a good pair of parallel pliers. Hey there, Joe's Tech, or Joe Tech, sorry. I see Mr. Rossman's not here to dish out the usual BS. Hey, DeAndre. Yeah, so I actually feel a bit bad because, um, you know, Harold sent me this package quite some time ago and I just have not had the opportunity to deal with it and um, yeah it's making me feel pretty guilty uh, let's see if I can do this comparatively quick because obviously we don't want to heat up that NAND module too much there we go just got to try and not panic too much, which is pretty hard when you know you've got someone's data on the line. Yep, yeah, there it is. I'm seeing a lot of them crack like that, that sort of fatigue line straight across. You can see very distinctly there how it's delaminated. The two-tone really gives it away. Put that into the box. Let's check our continuity mode. And our short has gone. So that was it. So yep, it was the piccolo area. It's nice. It's nice every now and then when you do get one that, you know, what I should shut my mouth until I've actually proven that it boots, just in case. I don't want to jinx myself tonight. Let's have a look at the schematic. So that was C9335. Uh, it's a 22-10-603. Okay. I may have to steal that from another board. Oops, squeaky squeaky. Where's my 603 caps? I haven't really been populating my 603 cat box very much lately. Let's see, 10, 25, 603? No, we need 22s. Um, 22, 10, 603. There we go, we have a winner. Looks like I was lucky enough to didn't order them that long ago either. Goody. At least we now have a brand new cap for it. Hey Kenny Whidden, how's it going? Well, I'm glad to hear that the UK has cooled down a bit. I know when it comes summer here, we sort of get lulled initially. We sort of think, oh, it's not so bad, you know. This isn't the fiery hell and doom that we had last year. And you get complacent, and before you know it, it's fiery hell and doom again. And then it won't stop. That's the worst thing. So it's not just three or four days, it's two or three weeks.
Uh, Anthony, no, this is an entirely different machine. This is a 1706. Now, the other thing is, I really do need to fix up that cap by the CD3215 because that is a well known failure point. So, there's no point just packing this up and saying fixed when I know that that one's going to pop and die within the next month or two. It's a bit of preventative maintenance. Okay, so on the hot board we're 0.2 and that is supposed to be a 0.3 rail, so we're doing good. Yep. Okay, now we've got to go down and sort out that 3215's cap. Sadly, Jessica, that is certainly something that happens every damned year around here. Or not here, that's not true. I mean in Australia. But, um, not a lot changes, unfortunately. Okay, now this is a bit naughty, but it does make my life easier. I tend to fold this up. Like that. It just makes it much easier to get access to the cap. Which means you're going to have less stuffing around, you know, overheating the board, things like that. I quite like it though, Jason, because it means that, you know, it's a nice signature fault. I think the worst thing about this position though is that depending on... The, uh, depending on your luck, that cap, when you remove it, sometimes it will take the trace out with it, and that's a real pain in the posterior. I'm actually very surprised that cap didn't drop off already. Certainly it's very close. Especially when you consider how little visual damage was on that um, piccolo cap compared to this. Now see, what people will often do, and I know I've done it myself, is you know, you'll use the physical shear off method, but um, yeah, I've been finding that the ratio, or the number of times that it goes wrong is starting to get a little bit too much for me. Yeah, you will get bad luck now and then, but this is starting to be a little bit more like the trace just really can't handle that sort of shearing stress. Just like I can't handle not having my air filter on. Hey Tony W. Now unfortunately I'm probably not going to really get any solder on this Oh well, look at that, got lucky. Just wanted to get the solder down there so I could try and get this out. A little bit earlier. And look, if things go bad and I've got to redo the 3215, then, you know, that's okay. There we go. See, just adding that little bit of solder and a little bit of a twist at the right time and it does come out fairly easy without ruining that trace. And the next trick is getting another cap down there. Now that I believe they're usually 10 microfarad 6.3 402s. I think, I think, I think. Uh, which other cap are you talking about, Jessica? Are you talking about this one over here? Or something else? That there is a filter. That's okay. This one's fine. It's just got a bit of conformal coat over it. See, 
CB300. Yep, 10 microfarad, 63402. One to the right of the one you just taken off. Uh, they all look good there. There's no problem there. That one's just got a little bit of solder sitting on top of it. It's fine. Yeah, none of those are... That one and that one, they're fine. The rest of them are resistors. Oh, I'll just get my 402 caps. Hey there, Qs. I do need to pick up a bit of that solder. There's way too much solder there. use the chisel tip. You trying to find more staff, Jason? Hey there, Cecilia from Poland. Alright, should be able to get this down pretty quickly. Let it solder up against the edge of the chip. It's usually you. There we go. Bam. Let's have another look over the board while we wait for it to cool off a bit. I'm a little disappointed about this, there's a bit more flux than I wanted. I kind of need Q-tips that are halfway between the normal earbuds and these itty bitty tiny weeny whiny and these... Uh, the trouble with these is that They've got the right sort of dimension, but unfortunately they don't have a lot of material on them, so you don't get to pick up a lot of flux when you use them. But they are good for getting into nooks and crannies, I'll definitely say that much. Lip liner tips. Uh, they're a bit thick, aren't they? I guess it depends on how big the lip liner is. Like these are gun cleaning tips. Ach, niemand. Ah, das ist bei Kack. Ah, I wasn't supposed to just smear that everywhere. Great. Good job, sir. Good job. I hate the way the board looks after you've done that. Tremendously unprofessional. You're probably thinking, why don't I just ultrasonic it? And it's like, yeah, you know, you have a point. I should just ultrasonic it. But i got to admit, the board is good otherwise, and I'd rather not ultrasonic a good board. Certainly not least before the data's been recovered. All right, it's going to have to just go with that. Uh, Q's, 
I'm embarrassing, I have to say, no, I have not. I have got them in my mail office, and, you know, every weekend I say to myself, do it. So maybe I'll try this weekend. I feel very... It is definitely a point of embarrassment in my house here. Because I know... I try every week to send those out, and I fail every Monday. So I'll try again this week. I don't know what it is, but yeah, the boards are done, the multimeters are packed, the cables are in it, the licenses are ready, and yet I still just keep not doing it, and I don't know what's wrong with me. So Q's, no, you have not missed out. It's still pending. I'm just the moron that hasn't done his job. Like I did all the development, I've done all the stuff that needs to be done. Now just that very last bit, that shipping bit, and it's got me over a barrel and it frustrates the living daylights out of it. Because I know, all I have to do is just do it. Just do it, Paul. That's what I tell myself. Go on, just go in there, start sending them off. And what happens, unfortunately, with these sort of things, I'm not just talking about this specific instance, but... If a job goes beyond a certain point where you're supposed to have done it and you still haven't done it, it gets into that um, weird sort of twilight zone where you can never seem to get it out. Sounds like you're boot leaving, yep, yeah, pretty much to it. Hey, Dedumres, can you interest me in a software development for a PC-14 rework station control? I don't really know anything about those things. Are you saying you want, you're interested in making or getting me to develop the firmware for it or something? Or am I misreading you? I think the biggest problem with a lot of that kind of stuff is that there's a tremendous amount of time investment and very little um, very little back other than the personal satisfaction of knowing you've done it. Not a firmware of a PC software for what is the PC 14 rework station controller? So what you're just uh, communicating through serial pool or something and um, well send me an email with what it is you're thinking dear god if lewis hears me talking like this he'll scream because he asked well he was wondering if i was just interested in some software stuff and i was like no nope. <laughs> i played as fool and now here i am with dadam res going sure tell me what it is you want yeah lewis will be like what the fuck man and to think I almost considered you a friend. You horrible Australian people. 14 is a PWM controller for a lot of BGO rework stations. Has 232 communication with the host PC. Okay. So I guess my first question will be, given that it's widely known and used, why isn't there an existing solution for what you want? I'm, I'm not meaning that in a um, patronizing way or anything like that. Probably not even the right word. I'm just sort of meaning like, will I be reinventing the wheel? Not that I have a problem reinventing the wheel, but if there's uh, going to be a royalty type fee associated with it. The last thing you want to do is reinvent the wheel when there's already 10 million others out there. Pierre, I'd say, right, okay. Uh, PID is not my strongest area. There are, but they're horrible. Hmm. Is that because they're mostly written in Chinglish? I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean that as in a reality way. It's like they do at least write a English-like interface for a lot of that soft uh, equipment. 
but there are certain nuances that get messed up in translation causing a degree of frustration for the end user. There's a piece of solution but it's buggy as AF, yeah okay I'm, I'm not gonna expand that one out yet. Maybe when I'm a little angrier. <laughs> Wait what the hell am I doing going full rebuild on this? Okay I'm kind of getting a little cocky here I really should finish up this little bit and then power it up to make sure it even works. Hey there Raj. Well Raj, you've got my email so send me through what you're thinking. It may not be a fit for what I'm doing. I mean I really do only write very simplistic software like you've seen me with my multimeter software and things like that and it's all very simple. I mean yeah flex board view and open board view are a little more complicated but I don't really write complicated software in general. I'm a very simple programmer. My main advantage or my main thing as a programmer though is I do, do generally get products written and out there as opposed to being forever just swimming around in circles and going nowhere forward. Okay, Dick. Let's see if this even boots. Afrikaans folklore. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay, let's get the USB meter up. CD development, PLD, PLD USB meter, serial edition, on screen display version. I've really got to batch script this one. <laughs> uh, v. Minus. P That works. Yes, plain simple man who likes his C, he likes his bash, his PHP, and that's about it. I don't tend to spread my wings more than that. I mean, I used to. I, I did try Java and Perl and whatever was trendy at the time. But in the end, I realized, you know what? I'm good at C, good enough, and PHP, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay, plugged in. We get no voltage. That's a bad, bad sign. Did I? Oh, there we go. Oh, must mean it's a bad plug. Hey, full wave. All right, looks like we're booting straight into the OS, so that's fantastic. We have fixed it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Nice to see that working as it should. But yeah, I don't tend to chase the latest programming fads, and I don't get into the uh, how could you say the technically brilliant side of programming either. It's I'm a very plodding, straightforward type of coder. I'm sort of like the guy that is in the accounting department that ends up writing something in Visual Basic that the company uses simply because, well, he did it. And it ends up working fine. It has its limitations. And then many years later, they decide they're going to spend a few hundred thousand dollars and rewrite it properly but they never succeed and <laughs> they revert back to the old visual basic version using uh, microsoft access and um, live happily ever after hey there pionov paul's a lumberjack and he's okay yeah i can live with that yeah I, I really do not aspire to the whole the best in the world or anything like that. For me, I like to code so it works. 
and if I've got time and the inclination I'll go back and refine it but other than that I prefer to first things first have something that works thank you to Dumbrus notification on your phone before was you ah oh, that means I know what you did I know what you did thank you very much for that I got $13.84 through PayPal from Dodumres thank you very much Dodumres very nice for you to contribute through PayPal keep YouTube out of that loop Uh, Q's the prototype. I've got the circuit boards. They're um, in production now. Okay, we're down at 0%, so I just want to see that that picks up to 1% first. They got sent in, and I should get them back in about two or three weeks. Uh, then we can build it, and that will be the first completely integrated version. I don't think I will bother with the LCD display. I think while it's an amusing and nice little feature, I don't think it's really necessary. But if it's desired, I can leave the header on there or something like that and people can do what they like with it, maybe. I mean, the firmware and everything else is going to be open source. So, yeah. And the design is very simple, really. I mean, it looks like a colossal beast of a thing on my workbench because it's all the different multiple parts just hot glued together oh we're up to two percent okay so this is charging working everything's excellent so I just uh, need to shut this down this person's gonna be quite happy and I'm gonna be quite happy I'm gonna be happy because I'm gonna get paid and believe me that's the best thing of all Hey Godfrey, uh, Keith Windsor from PE, Port Elizabeth is it, or do I screw that up again? A lot of people without computers will purchase that one of the display. Well, the thing is though, yeah, with the display, it's uh, there's there's all the other existing ones. You know, you got these nice, colourful USB-C ones, and they're going to be a fair bit cheaper. Mine's just going to be a plain, simple eight by two matrix display, and all it's going to show is volts and amps, nothing else. None of the fancy little things like what protocol it is or anything like that simple man stuff that's what I'm all about a simple man for complicated times oh Keith what have they changed um, P's name to now it's a bit like when they changed Pretoria to um, what is it Swanee now how do you how do you even pronounce that I haven't heard it properly pronounced I just read it and saw it was look like Swanee It's kind of interesting because Pretoria, there wasn't a city there before as far as I know. I know there was probably some settlements there, but there certainly wasn't a city. Anyway, so there it goes. Hey, Brian Moran. Uh, Christian Alwood, it was a shorted cap on the Piccolo chip, which is what we all well most of us predicted it was going to be something to do with piccolo and thankfully it was because when it is something with piccolo it's fixable and then we then we also checked around the board and found that one of the caps for one of the cd3215s was only a day or two away from cracking again uh, cracking itself and ruining the good work so we changed that as well. Escape from Pretoria. Ha! Uh, call someone Pliston and give them an eye, eye patch. For me, the harder thing was escape from Johannesburg. I got... Where was I? 
I was coming back from some one of the casinos that I had to go do work at and oh god damn what was the casino called it's about an hour and a half it wasn't Sun City or anything like that it was somewhere else completely it looked like a little fantasy castle place or whatever anyway uh, it was one of the um, legacy hotels c subsidiary casinos but I came back at like three o'clock in the morning and I finished all my work because I was working in the servers uh, at that time and I got into the wrong part of Johannesburg at three o'clock in the morning uh, it was not a good thing <laughs> pretty much crapped my pants You know, white fella driving around in a fancy BMW at three o'clock in the morning, probably emitting the whole I am lost thing in pre GPS type era. Uh, I know I went the wrong way down a few streets to get out of there. Jesus, no way I can pronounce that, Keith. Kuberha. Oh no, forget that. I can't do it. But yeah, I was um, a very obvious target if anyone was on the lookout to do some carjacking. Thankfully, I did get out of there. Uh, I just wish I could remember what the casino's name was. It was out in the middle of no flipping where. That was the weird thing. You know, it wasn't like I was going out to um, the Palanisburg or you know, heading down to Durban or anything like that. And it wasn't... It was like in the opposite direction of um, Poch. So like if, you, if you're heading off to Poch but go the other way... <laughs> Lannisburg was um, a nice short distance for me. I did that trip many times each week because uh, the two hotels I was looking after out there was the Buckabung and Kwamartani. And Buckabung was a um, fancier hotel, but I actually preferred the feel of Kwamartani. I really did enjoy going out there all the time, though. It's a nice sort of hour and a half drive. And every time I would drive out there, I'd always try to work out what was going to be the optimal way. Whether I should uh, go through how to be a sport done or bypass it. Yeah. Always fun and games. Which direction and how far? Good night, Jason. Thanks for dropping in as always. I'm, it was about two hours drive, I'd say, probably heading north. I'm pretty sure it was uh, north northeast, something like that. Uh, that was a memory. It's you know we're talking 24 years ago now. Something about that place that was um, something castle uh white castle uh no that's a stupid food chain place yeah unfortunately my it was not a common one for me to go to in fact i think i only went out there twice in total in comparison like i would be going out to yeah, the Polanisberg, yeah, at least twice a week, maybe usually three or four. Always lived out there. Fortunately, the staff were very accommodating, so I didn't have to sleep in my car too much. Okay, let's 
see it goes this way. I'm gonna have to bring up Google Maps and see if I can find the damn place. There's a couple of people I could ask, but they won't respond in time. Occasionally I'd get to go down to Cape Town because the hotel we had down there, which was the Commodore, that um, occasionally needed a bit of networking assistance or servers updated. Uh, I went out to a Cote d'Azur once. I never got to Port Elizabeth though, uh, which was a bit annoying to me. What was the other place that I went to? Um, Castleburn. That was nice to go to. Just at the base of the Drakensberg. A very nice place. They have White Castle in Australia. I actually don't even know. I'm just going to make sure this boots still. Probably it's going to need a bootstrapping though. Should have lived there. Well, I tried. I really did try, but they kicked me out, so. <laughs> Bong! There we go. Now, I got there in 96 and they kicked me out just before 2001. Right. This battery is definitely having problems. It's already, It went back down to 0%, so. It's okay. We can watch it charge while I, um, while I go looking for this place that I cannot recall. Trip down memory lane. Gavin, I have not had a chance to play with my CNC. It's quite depressing, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Um, I wonder if it was Oliphant's Fontaine. No, a bit too close. Would I have stayed in South Africa? I actually, yes. I was certainly in the mood to do so. Let's see, what's my so 20 kilometer scale here? No, I think I'm going to have to zoom out a bit. Hmm. Okay, I think I might have to just do South African. Okay, so definitely not Sun City because that's where I used to do most of my stuff. This here is the Palanisburg National Park. So I would basically go from Pretoria to Palanisburg many, many, many times. I can only imagine it's going to be the carousel in that case. Would you have been doing this kind of repair if you'd stayed in South Africa? No, not likely. I was primarily a jack of all trades in South Africa. But it, yeah, it was all IT related sort of. Yeah, so it wasn't Poch, Poch down here. It wasn't Rustenburg. It was, uh, couldn't have been Kruger's door. No, it was too close. Uh, 
Let's have a look, see if I recognise if anything triggers me. These photos here, they look like the ones that I used to have back in the late 90s. There was a particular person who did all of these photos, this particular style. And I remember posting up on the website that I was doing for the their work. It just has a particular quality about it that makes me think it's the same chap. Might I do seem to remember the horse. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking it was the carousel, yeah. Let's see, uh have a look at the history who owns it. If it's under Legacy Group, then it might be the one I'm thinking of. Then again, back then, I was just sort of like helping out people that I already knew. So it's quite possible that this wasn't even part of the... Um, group that I was normally working with but to be fair you know it's um, changed hands probably so many times um, history of ownership of the car Paul can't spell OUSL Yeah, okay, they got it from Sun International. That's, yeah, so it would have been that one. Because at the time that I was there, it was probably under the wing of Sun International. Anyway. Um, one of the most amazing places I went to wasn't actually in South Africa, but was actually in Namibia. And that was the Swakopman Hotel. And they have to constantly sweep this place because it will get consumed by let's see uh, it will get consumed by the desert. Uh, let's see, look at this photo. Yeah, so all of this here, there's a bunch of dunes and everything, and they just constantly it's just trying to eat this whole place. I wonder when this photo was taken, let's see, 2017, holy crap, because that looks like that's grown quite a bit since I was there. Honestly, it looks like a city out of Diablo. Hmm. It's not even a dust storms as such, it's just a case of the desert just keeps ebbing forward, and this here is the Atlantic Ocean. I will make note that it's extremely cold, even at the best of times. And if someone gives you a challenge to go swim in there, don't. And if you do, you'll probably walk out a eunuch. This looks like an older photo. Uh, I don't know which one was the hotel I was in. Just still got stocks and stocks in there. Hmm. Oh, well. anyway, boring you all. That's enough. Let's uh, get back to the overhead. Well, that pretty much is that for tonight. In that case, we've fixed up that machine. It was pretty straightforward. 
just two caps or one dead cap and then one almost dead cap so uh, I'm glad it's sold like I said I will get the money for that so it's nice and the person will get their data which is even nicer I suppose for them but it's always a good thing when you can have a fair exchange between the two parties they get the data I get I get to um, have the money to lay down more tiles because we kitchen area is all done but that was something between one quarter and one third of all the tiles that we have to put down in the house the poor bastards are probably like oh dear god do we have to come back for more it's like yep you do all right so we've bagged up our job that will go into the archives and hopefully i don't have to ever look at that again but if anyone inquires what did you take off our board I can either look at the video or I can check the baggie. So I'm out of here. You all take care. Thanks for watching again. And I'll see you next time whenever that may be. Could be tomorrow. Could be next week. You just have to sit by and uh, wait for the notification. I'll catch you all later. Thank you.